What does it mean to look forward and reason back? So the core of the book's argument is that there are five timeless ways to think about what these three individuals did. And the first one is what we call look forward and reason back. And the idea of look forward, reason back is like being a chess player or a game theorist for people who are familiar with game theory, which is that what you need to do to be a great strategist is you need to think two or three steps ahead down the road, what's going on in the future, and then you want to try to reason back to what I need to do today. The key problem that many managers face is they tend to look backwards. They say, what have I done well in the past, and therefore, what do I need to do today? Or what's going on in my world today, and how am I going to solve those problems? But a great strategist actually has to do something different. They have to actually be thinking two or three steps ahead, mm -hmm. both of their industry, of their companies, and as a consequence, give them the opportunity to be investing today in what they can deliver tomorrow. So look forward, reason back is the first rule, and, and then we divide that into four principles. And the principles relate to building a vision for the company and then reasoning back to the boundaries and priorities that a company needs to do today to be able to anticipate what competitors uh, are likely to do in the future and then how to build barriers to entry and switching costs for those vis-a-vis -vis those competitors so other players can't come into their markets, about how do you anticipate customers' uh, needs. It's not just about solving today's customers' problems, but solving the problems that the customers may not even know that they have. Mm -hmm. And then the critical idea here is how do I then reason back to what I can deliver today, not try to do things that aren't necessarily capable to deliver today. And then finally, the, the last principle is the idea about thinking about major changes at the industry level, what we call strategic inflection points. Was it Steve Jobs that said a lot of times consumers don't even know what they need or want until <laughs> you create it for them. <laughs> is that something most, the way most people can think or was that unique to him? Well, it's, Steve was, um, if you remember, was actually initially quoting um, Henry Ford, where he said, if Henry Ford asked people what they wanted back in the day, <laughs> it was they would want a faster horse. <laughs> and so if that's the way you think, you, all you're gonna be focused on is delivering the faster horse rather than the new modern car. Mm. And uh, in Steve's case, in all of his, m his major product breakthroughs, the question he was asking is, how could you say to someone, for example, you want a multi-touch smartphone? They wouldn't even know what multi-touch is. They wouldn't know how to explain it or describe it. Everyone, th everyone thought of the th at the time they needed a keyboard. So unless you're thinking about what customers ultimately would like to, to be able to do with their lives, it's very hard to be able to make the right investments today to get there.